It's Monday, June 17, 2024. Thank you so much for joining me today. Pull up a chair, grab a coffee, grab a tea, whatever you're drinking. And uh, let's go over some of this news today. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Share these videos everywhere and comment down below. The comments are absolutely phenomenal. So let's just get right into it today. Markets up across the board, we are hitting all-time highs yet again. You would think that everything is just incredible out there. You would think that the economy, that the U.S. economy is absolutely going gangbusters, that it's booming, that people are making more money than ever, that people are buying houses and they're buying cars. None of this is happening. People are struggling. People are falling behind. They're not buying cars. They're not buying houses. They can't even save $500 at this point. But somebody will write me today, of course, and tell me that everything's fine. The economy's booming because the stock market is up. And this is just how ignorant these people are because they don't understand that there is no relationship, only a disconnect between uh, the reality of the stock market and the reality of Main Street and the real economy. There is no connection between the two anymore. 80% of Americans say grocery costs have notably increased since the health crisis started. Survey finds this on CNBC today. What a shock, right? But markets are at all time highs, yet people are struggling just going to the grocery store and buying food. It says here in a survey, 28% sacrificed other needs like rent or, or bills for groceries. Markets up today. Markets all-time highs, yet 28% of the people surveyed in this article sacrificed other needs like their rent just to be able to buy food. 27% have skipped meals. 15% have had to turn to food banks to get food. 53% indicate they earn too much to qualify for food stamps or other government assistance, but still have difficulties paying for necessities. My question to all of you today is how much further can the average American stretch? Uh, you, you can only work so many hours. You can only have so many jobs. Uh, people are beyond a point of no return, in my opinion. They, they are so far stretched at this point. I don't think they can stretch any further. And we're beginning to see serious cracks in the dam. Here's another one today. Here's why car payments are so high right now. Get this. As of May... The average new car payment was $760 per month. In December of, 22, of 2022, that number was $535 per month. So we've seen a 40% increase uh, since uh, December of 2022. How in the world are people doing this? Uh, a near record 17% of car owners are paying $1,000 or more a month for a car payment. On average, people are paying seven to $800 a month, and they're gonna do this for the next five to six years. How many people are gonna be able to do this for the next five or six years, pay seven to $800 a month, or $1,000 a month? This, to me, is 110% unsustainable. People have really got themselves in big trouble here. It says here, underwater trade-ins are bumping up car payments. 23% of customers with trade-ins had negative equity uh, of more than $6,167 on average. So they owed more than what the car was worth when they traded in. And so what people are doing is they're, they're trading it in, no equity in these cars, negative equity, and they're buying a new car. And so they're just tag, tapping, tagging that on to the, to the new payment. So people have these enormous payments and I don't know why people would even go out and buy a new car when they have negative, negative equity in the car that they have right now. Why not just drive it till the wheels fall off? But many Americans just got to continue to live that lifestyle that they need a newer car. Uh, they're gonna, their car payment's going to go up. They're going to trade this car in with negative equity and just you know, tag it on to the, to the new payment. It's unbelievable how people are thinking right now. Uh, they're not using any common sense, and they're getting themselves into very, very big trouble here. And I think a lot of people think that things are just going to turn around in the next couple months or maybe after the election. It's going to be an instant turnaround. Uh, I highly doubt it. I think big trouble is coming. doesn't matter who wins the election. Uh, we're going to see some big, big trouble coming um, 
uh, after the election. So if you think everything's going to improve overnight in 2025, I highly doubt it. Um, I think things could get much worse. But right now, uh, for me personally, I can't even think that far out. Right now, I'm just looking 30 days out, 60 days out, and it does not look good. Uh, interesting one here on the hedge. Russia overtakes U.S. as gas supplier to Europe. Uh, this, as Saudi Arabia moves from the dollars and allegiance to, to, to the United States and the U U.S. dollar uh, to other currencies and the BRIC, BRICS nations. They're going to align their allegiances now with the BRICS nations, not the U.S., not the U.S. petrodollar. They now have allegiance uh, to the BRICS nations, and they're forming relationships with other rising global powers like Russia, like China, and many, many others on that list of, of BRICS nations. So uh, our, uh, our dominance, our world dominance is winding down, ladies and gentlemen. And it, it's sad to say, but things are really going to change here in America. And most people are not ready and not prepared for that. They have no idea. This is literally speaking Latin to those people. They have no idea what I'm talking about right now. I think if you went and, and just walk down a, a street and ask 100 people, what, what is the BRICS? I think you'd be lucky if three people out of 100 could give you an answer. I think, I think you'd be lucky to have three people, people uh, have any knowledge of what the BRICS is. But they're going to find out at some point because the world is shifting. There is a whole new world taking place. And we are going to, uh, I think, really... Uh, pay a huge price here. Again, could have been avoided, but we wanted to continue to weaponize the U.S. dollar. We wanted to throw thousands of sanctions uh, across the globe on many, many nations. We wanted to start all these unnecessary, unwanted wars. Uh, we wanted to print tons, trillions of dollars and devalue our own currency. And it is all winding down. Uh, here's another one today. Uh, iconic Hollywood fast food restaurant closes for good. One of the most recognizable neon signs in Hollywood has gone dark forever. Arby's Roast Beef uh, at 5920 Sunset Boulevard closed this past Saturday after 55 years of business. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of, of Arby's. But this is really sad because this is a, an iconic, uh, almost a, a piece of, of history here uh, in Los Angeles. A restaurant open for 55 years on Sunset Boulevard closed this past weekend. Uh, it's sad. People now don't have a job. It's another empty building. Wages, inflation, and this dying economy uh, all took a toll on this Arby's of 55 years. I, I, it breaks my heart when I see a retailer or a restaurant in business for so many years and then just, it's over, gone. Sad, think about 55 years doing business and it's just all over, done. Sad, it really, really is sad and it's never coming back. Here's another one today, job openings versus unemployment. Uh, looks very much like a recession has begun. Uh, this was on on uh, mishtalk.com. First of all, I, I have to ask, does anybody out there believe the current number of job openings? What is it, 8.09 million, whatever number they're giving us right now. So many people have written me. I'm sure you've read many of, of the articles in the news where you know somebody will fill out 300 resumes and they don't get a call, they don't get a response. Um, and, and this is time and time again, reading these articles, people telling me I, you know they filled out 75 resumes online, didn't get didn't hear a thing, didn't get a job. Uh, so you know that a lot of these jobs are fake. They don't exist. Uh, since May of 2023, full-time employment, is down 1.2 million jobs uh, as we see 2.8 million jobs added, but we're losing full-time jobs. So we're seeing a lot, of, a lot more part-time jobs. And you have a lot of people from other parts of the world uh, working at a lot of these jobs now. So it does not look good. And I will say this again, I will reiterate this. Uh, do whatever you have to do to keep your job. You may not love it. You might not even like it. But if it is paying the bills right now, especially if you have a well-paying job, 
I would do whatever I could in my power not to lose that job. And hopefully things change in, in the next year or two or whenever. I have no idea if they're even going to change. It could get much worse in a year or two from now. I think we're already in a depression, and I think this depression is going to last a long time. More reason to hang on to what you have. Hang on to your job. Don't lose it. Um, but look, add to your skill sets. Work, you know, work harder, whatever you have to do to save the job. I know somebody's going to write me and tell me that nobody, you know, uh, corporate America doesn't care about you. Your boss doesn't care about you. Uh, that may be the case. But whatever you have to do at this point to not lose that job, uh, to pay those bills. They say if you still have that job, you can still make the mortgage or the rent, the car payment, and feed yourself. If you lose that job, even though you don't like it and those people don't care about you and it's corporate and whatever, if you lose that job, you're going to be in big trouble and it's going to be very, very hard to replace a good job right now. So please take my advice on that. Don't lose your job. California's exodus could get even worse. 573 plus thousand people in the last three years have left California. Why is that? A lot of crime. Uh, we're now running a very, very large deficit. It's extremely expensive. Taxes are going up uh, and people are leaving. But this isn't just happening here. It's happening to many, many other states. And it seems as, as though people are continuing to go to the same states, Texas, Florida, places like that. But we're starting to see problems in those states too. Uh, home prices have skyrocketed. skyrocketed. Uh, taxes are going up, uh, in, insurance costs to uh, property insurance to insure your, your home going up. So it's going to get more difficult wherever you move to, wherever you run to. It is going to get more uh, difficult to survive. Uh, yes, there are better places to live. There's no doubt about it. But wherever you go, uh, you're going to be facing some problems. Axios. U.S. faces serious threat of terror attack, expert and former CIA chief warn. Uh, we have now had repeated warnings from the FBI, military officials, a former acting CIA director, a legendary foreign policy thinker, all saying the same thing, that the U.S. faces a serious threat of a terrorist attack in the months ahead. Now they're, now they're actually giving us a, a, a time frame here. The months ahead, is that two months, three months, four months? They're not saying the years ahead or next year. They're saying the months ahead. I would, I would take this very, very seriously. FBI Director uh, Christopher Wray and Army General Eric Carrilla have similar warnings. They know something. They're not telling us, but they know something. They know quite a bit. And I would probably have to agree with these warnings. We're probably going to see something in the months ahead. So get ready. And I've got to ask all of you, how are you getting ready for an attack? Uh, are, are you taking um, any type of, of preparations uh, for this? How do you really prepare for this? Me, I'm staying away from large crowds and large events. Uh, I was just watching uh, this attack that happened at this little water park, I believe in Michigan, uh, a couple days ago, uh, where this... Um, piece of, of garbage took, uh, well, I, I don't know how many people lost their lives, one or two maybe. Uh, kids were injured. Um, but this was really, really ugly, this event that took place at this uh, water pad, I, they call it, in Michigan. Um, you, you just, you cannot take this stuff lightly. Uh, you're in a large crowd. You can be at a park, a water park, a water pad, a mall, a sporting event. They are getting you ready for something. They're warning us that they know something is coming. Uh, so I would take this extremely seriously. Uh, and how are you preparing for it? Is there any way to prepare for this? Again, I'm staying away from the larger crowds. Uh, is there anything we can really do to prepare for this? I, I don't really know. Let me know your thoughts on this. Please comment down below. I, I want to know, how are you preparing? Are you preparing for this? Is there a way to prepare for this so that we can avoid being a victim? I don't really have the answer. Uh, like I said, I'm just staying away from larger crowds, um, big cities. Other than that, let me know uh, what, what you're doing. Love to know. NBC Los Angeles wildfires burning in Southern California. I'm going to close it out with this one. Very, very windy today. 
Uh, yesterday, uh, the smoke was just pouring into the desert. You could not even see the mountains. It, you could smell the fire. Uh, 15,000 acres in northern Los Angeles and Ventura County uh, on fire. Uh, we, uh, we have very strong winds. It's, it's cooled down today, only in the 90s. 500 acres burning in Lancaster, 860 acres in Moreno Valley. That's only about 45 minutes from here. And I believe that there's another fire in Yucaipa, which is only about a half an hour from here. So you have to ask yourself, what in the world is going on here uh, with all this crazy weather, the fires, uh, the droughts, the crazy rain we've had in the past, uh, the multiple earthquakes? It's just crazy, crazy weather. And I will say this, if you um, live out here in the desert, I've never seen the weather like this where literally every day it's windy, the air quality is absolutely horrific, it's hideous. I've never seen the air quality out here so bad. Typically in the desert we would have the bluest skies, mountains would be crystal clear, it would just be gorgeous and, and very, very little wind. Now we're getting these, these weird wind storms and just the air quality, you can just see the particles in the air, it's really strange. It is really, really strange. So, so I don't know what's going on here. If you live out in the desert and you've noticed this, please comment. Let me know your thoughts on this also. Uh, but I've never seen the weather out here in the Coachella Valley ever like this. This is just unbelievable. Um, and on top of it, now it's getting warm and we just have this terrible air quality. And now we have multiple fires in Southern California. So I don't know. It, 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 is somebody trying to tell us something? I don't know. But there's a lot going on uh, with, um, uh, with what man is doing, with what nature is doing. Uh, it, it, there's a lot going on. Maybe God's trying to wake some people up. I'm going to leave it there today. Again, thank you so much for joining me. Please uh, like, share, subscribe, and uh, leave a comment down below. I would really appreciate that. And as always, I look forward to speaking to each and every one of you. God bless. Please be safe and be careful out there and be praying for this country. We need help. We need a miracle. God bless.